We know more about the surface of our moon than we do of the bottoms of our oceans. To date, we have managed to explore a mere 5% of the floors of Earth's oceans. Much remains to be learned and indeed explored. Unimaginable mysteries, treasures, and the possible odd sea monster could all still be lying deep within the blackness, irretrievable, and thus undiscovered. Our oceans are the lifeblood of the planet, covering more than 70% of its surface. Responsible for the driving forces behind weather systems, the regulation of global seasonal temperatures, and ultimately, supporting all living organisms in one way or another. Just what could be laying upon our ocean floors? Lost relics from a bygone era? Possible crashed ancient alien craft? Indeed, we have already discovered the enigmatic El Tannen antenna, which was discovered resting deep upon the Antarctic seabed, found some decades ago. Yet what else could be lurking down there, just waiting to be discovered? It seems, fortunately, that an ROV, a remote-operated vehicle, managed and controlled by the Olympic Challenger, may have managed to give us another glimpse of one of these utterly perplexing structures resting deep within our oceans. Recorded on September 11, 2010, it is still unknown just what this object could be, possibly ancient, seemingly installed sunk into the ocean floor at a considerable depth. Curiously, the recent event unfolded during a live feed broadcast, and for some reason, as soon as the ROV came into visual contact with this most peculiar of objects, or indeed possible structure, the crew controlling the machine mysteriously decided to maneuver the ROV away, out of view of the object. The small fragment of footage that was seen, however, indicated that the number of right angles within the structure's form, and indeed its overall appearance, makes it seem unlikely to have had natural origins. However, due to the company's reluctance to discuss or even acknowledge the event, not much regarding the discovery has been attained. Just what this thing was may remain a mystery, or at least kept secret, hidden away from most of the public domain. I have said in passing, there is information about UFOs in cable games. A year ago, we shared with you the leaked State Department emails, files, and documents made available to the public by way of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, which pertained to the United States government's full awareness of a UFO crash site near the populated northern town of Igloo Lick, northern Canada, very near to the borders of Greenland. This object subsequently sinking to a great depth, it then began to emit a mysterious ping, a possible distress beacon, a sound which for some time began to annoy a large number of the locals. Since this event a few years ago, the strange ping has seemingly disappeared, and the fate of its source remains a mystery. An unfortunate fate which may also be bestowed upon this most recent and intriguing of discoveries made by the Olympic Challenger. Yet thankfully, the world got to see it first. How many different civilizations, and thus different builders, have actually been and gone, only to be ignored by an academia wishing for their remnants to simply erode away? These remnants, many of which still existing ancient ruins, are visited by billions of people every year. Each attributed to a convenient imposter, a lie which conveniently ties in with previously printed, condoned, and currently preserved paradigms by superior influences. Not only ill-informing the world's young population, but attempting to rob us all of our own personal histories. However, thankfully, some things do not lie, cannot be hidden, and will never go away. We share many ancient, out-of-place artifacts on our channel, some more perplexing than others, yet our next artifacts might be the most puzzling yet. Found in Kosovo, upon the Sharplanina mountain range, an ancient advanced artifact that has been explained as having once been some kind of transformer. Found by photographer and researcher Ismet Smiley, he subsequently donated a sample for scientific examination. It was found that the artifact is no less than 20,000 years old. In addition to the stone, coil, and copper wires, 
The artifact amazingly contains some form of ancient insulator, whose composition differs from the surrounding material, although not tested, it appears to have mysterious convex bands fused into a stone. Parallel to these are four symmetrically located openings, which have been postulated to have been entry points for wires, these once collecting energy from the transformer. What is this mystifying object? What was it once used for? Who made it? And with dating results of over 20,000 years, just how much older could it possibly be? Could these objects have once been a common occurrence amongst this ancient civilization? Similar to the clearly advanced metal clamps previously covered and found upon numerous ancient block-built buildings throughout antiquity. Due to the sheer number of clamps used, although they are clearly a remnant left by a lost civilization, far older than academia would ever attribute the buildings to, many of the clamps have survived the eons to be tested, examined, and displayed in numerous different museums as more modern artifacts. Is this how this transformer survived? Was it due to the sheer number of them once in existence? Or is it possibly a very special rarity? Unfortunately, regardless of alternative advice, Ismet intends to donate it to academically funded scientists for, quote, further studies. We feel there is a high probability that the artifact may be lost or stolen. Regardless, it was thankfully photographed and is undoubtedly a very remarkable object. Many people are aware of the archaeological site known as Gobekli Tepe, an astonishing site of clearly great antiquity, a site like many others which dot our earth, which displays a far more sophisticated understanding, construction, and living practices to that of which would be publicly accepted by much of modern academia. Instead, it is often more favored to merely ignore such data as abnormalities, or it seems, if possible, to lock such controversies away from inquisitive minds, deep within archives or underwater. And our next site is no exception. Although Gobekli Tepe has become a synonymous candidate for evidence of a once highly advanced, ancient civilization which once flourished here on our planet, it is not the only site to be found within the area, or even the most astonishing. Known as Norsen Tepe, this is the real gem of archaeological Turkey. And yet, just like Waffle Rock, a site we have previously covered on our channel, located within the US, it lay at the bottom of a man-made dam, submerged deliberately and conveniently very shortly after some highly controversial discoveries were beginning to be made at the site. An enormous mounded fort, designed and shaped with a purpose of providing a sophisticated living quarters, when the site was excavated, it was found that no less than 40 inhabitations were present within the strata. Excavations were conducted between 1968 and 1974 by the German Archaeological Institute. Archaeologists, led by Harold Hopman, the Heidelberg Professor of Prehistory and Early History, found considerable evidence to suggest that many of the later inhabitants of this sophisticated fort were themselves highly advanced, seemingly preserving many mysterious items left by many as yet unknown people. Why a government would make the move to flood such a location remains a subject of debate, and one which has led some to accuse the Mexican government of being complicit in the cover-up of a highly advanced, ancient civilization which once lived here on Earth. The fieldwork was finished by 1974. Shortly thereafter, the construction of the Kiban Dam works began, rising the water level and submerging the site away from prying eyes. Who built Norsen Tepe? Why did they build it? It seems this fort has remained impenetrable since the day it was built, even successfully keeping out the elements for untold millennia, preserving untold treasures from a bygone era, treasures which seemingly shone too bright a light for some to bear. What kind of controversial archaeology is Norsen Tepe protecting? What are these government's bodies attempting to hide? These are questions which must be answered. 
Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. We've often covered the perplexing finds of giant skeletons, which have been repeatedly reported all over the world. We delved into the rumors and evidence of a considerable conspiracy surrounding the Smithsonian Institute and their cover-up of these remains. However, thankfully, it seems modern technology has made this job virtually impossible, and the evidence which has surfaced over the last few decades has finally been getting the publicity it deserves. For example, curious remains guarded by a humble priest from a small village within Ecuador have finally been allowed to see the light of day, and the true extent to this astounding cover-up is beginning to be revealed. Father Carlos Vaca has protected remains of ancient beings for many decades, and upon examination, it was found that they once belonged to people of over 7 meters in height. Apparently, the remains had been discovered from a site called Changaminas in Ecuador, and curiously, Changaminas translates as God's Cemetery. Although reports have surfaced from within Ecuador for over a century regarding finds of similar scales, this is the first time that such remains have remained within the public domain. The Mystery Park and Interlock in Switzerland, for example, has held since 2004 a reconstruction of a 7-meter specimen of an apparent human being that would have been just over 7 meters in height that was found within Loja. According to Father Carlos Vaca, the remains which he had successfully safeguarded until a time of his own death were given to him by Father Crespi, a figure who collected a vast array of perplexing, highly controversial and incredible artifacts, including remnants of a puzzling metal library we have previously covered. Unfortunately, upon the event of Father Crespi's death, his collection was ransacked, replaced with clear forgeries and cheap fakes. However, it seems Father Carlos Vaca may have kept some of these artifacts safe until his own death in 1999, upon which they luckily sank into the archives of the Ecuadorian Museum. Are these remains really that of giant human beings? Just who could they have belonged to? Has there really been a concerted effort to conceal these enormous remains from the world for over a century? If so, the question is, where are all these remains now? His collection also contains strange utensils, minerals and compounds of magical properties, which according to many authors could explain numerous archaeological mysteries that have not yet been deciphered. Some of the bone fragments were supposedly sent to the Smithsonian Institute for further analysis, the results of which were surprisingly broadcast on a television program in Ecuador led by renowned director Alfonso Espinosa de los Monteros. Could the legends be true and the aptly named City of Giants be named after the real thing? It seems thankfully as time goes on, the truth is slowly being revealed. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The Lotus Pond Undoubtedly, one of the many astonishing advanced ruins that can be found around our planet. Who built this pond? Or indeed, Polinarua, the incredible ancient ruin it is found amongst. Were the ancient religions merely reused? Maybe due to an attempt to claim such structures as their own. For indeed, these ancient buildings and their exquisite features provide an illusion of power as effortlessly as they seem to have been constructed. Any explanation, or the knowledge they were built with, evades us all. Polu Narua, within Sri Lanka, served as the country's capital city for nearly two centuries, between the 11th and 13th centuries AD. Just like the many other sites all over Earth, Polu Narua is indicative of advanced lost knowledge dating back to a time far before modern civilization even existed. We believe merely serving as ready-built sanctuaries, perfect for re-inhabitation, protecting their future guests from foes, and allowing them a head start in architectural and agricultural development. The Three Kings conveniently dominate the history of this site within academia. It should be clear to any astute individual that any group capable of creating such everlasting, perfectly precise sites would have undoubtedly dominated the surrounding lands for many years. However, as the truth is, as we would suspect, the reign of these three kings, and indeed our more modern ancestors' inhabitancy, lasted a mere century before being invaded and the ruins severely damaged. We believe that these structures were once built by the dominating, most knowledgeable force upon our Earth, a civilization which clearly attained a greater understanding of architecture than us, the modern man. 
We believe the evidence strongly suggests this, while there is no evidence to suggest what academia expects you to believe. That these currently unexplained, unimaginably advanced ancient ruins were somehow built by our copper-wielding ancestors. However, the choice in what you believe, of course, is entirely yours to make. President Putin recently visited one of the most mysterious places on Earth, the ruins of the ancient town of Arkheim. Historians, archaeologists, and UFOologists have spent many years trying to unravel the secrets of this place. Which nation was living in Arkheim more than 40 centuries ago? How did people of such ancient civilization manage to accomplish the incredible technological progress on Earth there? The Arkheim Valley was supposed to be flooded in 1987. Local authorities were intending to create a water reservoir there to irrigate drought-prone agriculture. However, scientists found strange ancient circles in the center of the valley. Authorities gave archaeologists 12 months to explore the area. Scientists were shocked at what they discovered. However, it is not the unusual earthworks that have attracted investigators, but rather, what was recently discovered beneath. A discovery which has seen several renowned alien investigators rushing to this remote and forgotten slice of the Russian landscape in search of the undeniable proof that we are not alone. Researcher Maria Makarova and her team were able to unearth a remarkably well-preserved skeleton in the ground beneath the site. However, it soon became evident that this was no normal skeleton. And although the research team have attempted to disagree with the clear possibility of it not actually being human remains, choosing to suspect that the skeleton somehow belonged to a woman from the Sarmati tribe which lived in what is now Ukraine, southern Russia, and Kazakhstan about 2,000 years ago. It unfortunately appears that this is an attempt to discredit the real possible value of these remains. This being a logical move by all professional researchers funded by an academia, which would not appreciate such honest and clearly forgivable assumptions based on current evidence being publicly disclosed. For example, firstly, the Sarmatia tribe may have practiced head-binding. However, this practice is largely believed to have been located in other parts of the world, and the lack of any additional finds within the tribe supporting this assumption would seem this is a deceptive conclusion to arrive at. Additionally, when head-binding was undertaken, unmistakable evidence of such is left upon the skull. Deformed cranial napping, the stitching of the skull will not appear as normal, yet, alas, the stitching will always be present and easily identifiable. Though astonishingly, this skull clearly shows no evidence of binding on the photographs. What's more, and perhaps more pressing, is the lack of any cranial stitching visible whatsoever. This stitching of the skull plates is part of human growth. We all have them, yet this skeleton does not. What do you think regarding the find? An abnormal tribe member buried beneath an extremely ancient, mysterious site? or something else entirely.